uh, talking briefly about the uh, uh, ELF format. Um, it's actually pretty similar to the one on x86. Uh, but I just thought I'd cover it here briefly. Uh, I'm sure this is also covered in the Life of Binaries course. Um, but uh, so if you remember, ELF stands for Executable Linkable Format. Um, and it essentially has, uh, this is what the, uh, this is what it looks like. So you have a, an int section text, uh, RO data, data, VSS, uh, symbols table. Uh, and then you have some debug symbols down at the bottom here. Uh, if you remember the dash G GDB option for the GCC, uh, this is where it generally puts all the debug symbols. Um, and then it also has a string table for additional uh, debugging. Um, but the most interesting pieces are up at the top. Uh, you will have a read-only code segment. Um, this is actually the stuff get, that gets uh, loaded into memory, um, followed by the read-write data segment. Um, so I'll talk a little bit more in detail about that. So then at the dot text uh, section in the ELF, uh, your binary is essentially what uh, has your code the opcodes uh, that the ARM processor actually uh, acts on. The RO data is your read-only data section. So things like constants, uh, uh, things like that are put in this section. So if you remember our Hello World program, the .RO data section in your uh, object dump, uh, you, you would see the Hello World string uh, located in this uh, section. The dot .data has your global static variables. Um, uh, the dot .vss has your uninitialized variables. If you just say int a and don't initialize it, uh, sort of sticks that variable in here. The heap actually in memory starts after the dot .vss section. So if you remember, uh, I said that this uh, segment actually gets uh, put into memory. Um, and once that gets put into memory, your heap starts right after your vss. And it actually grows towards increasing memory. The stack actually starts at the opposite direction and starts growing towards the heap. And so the stack and the heap sort of meet in the middle, if you will. So, um, so the stack grows towards lower memory addresses. The heap grows towards increasing memory. All right. So again, a reiteration of uh, the format. So if you remember the debug section is actually where all your uh, GDB symbols get put. Uh, the dot line is, again, for more debugging. It puts in your line number. So when you say breakpoint at line number, it looks up uh, the stuff in this section. Uh, there's another GDB command, actually, um, called uh, list, um, which actually lists your program code in C uh, when you're debugging. And the other thing that Galen mentioned uh, and a lot of people had questions on was how to step over an instruction. So if you have an instruction that branches uh, with like a branch instruction and you didn't want to actually go into that piece of code, you can actually use an instruction called the next i, uh, which essentially steps over that branch instruction. It doesn't branch. Or it actually goes, executes that code, comes back, and then continues with the next instruction. Um, does that make sense? So there's next and next i. Um, so they'll be uh, more useful as opposed to putting a uh, breakpoint at the instruction right after the branch and then doing continue. So that's the way I've been doing it. And your string table has all your uh, symbol information, like variable names, things like that. So it's also used for more debugging. Um, so now we'll start talking about how we can do a control hijack uh, on R. So uh, as you know, we can uh, if, if we're allowed to write to the stack pointer, um, you know that the link register gets usually gets saved onto the stack. So if you're able to write into the stack, uh, you can control the link register at least. And um, when the code returns, uh, the link register gets copied back into PC, and you can sort of control the uh, flow of execution from there. The other thing to remember is if you, uh, we talked about the ARM thumb procedure call standard, 
Um, and the ATPCS specifies that R0 through R3 are used as arguments to methods. So if we wanted to pop something like a shell on a, uh, on a server or something, um, then we, we would have to make a system call or an exec VE call, but we'd also need to pass arguments. Um, so this is sort of, uh, we're going to talk about how we can pop a shell. And that's like the ultimate goal. So this is uh, the picture I've shown you a couple of slides ago on what the frame looks like uh, in, in your stack. So the Kali save registers are first pushed on using the STMFD uh, stack pointer with write back. And all the registers that you want to save are put in there. Uh, followed by that, we have the link register, right? Um, the link register is where uh, the calling methods uh, PC is saved. So that also is put on the stack. So the idea would be you would write, or if you're able to write into the stack, you are, you're able to overwrite this uh, address here, right? And when the function returns, it copies the link register back into the PC, and uh, you can start, if you control that address, you can essentially have it execute arbitrary code. So this was a, an attack that was demonstrated, uh, I think, a year back, 2011, actually, uh, by Itzhak Abraham at DEF CON. Um, and uh, so if you remember, we can control the PC, but we can't control the arguments. Uh, how are we? going to write slash bin slash sh as the argument to system uh, in, into register R0, right? Because uh, system expects an argument, and it's going to expect the argument in the register R0. Uh, so the only way to uh, do it, at least uh, his approach, is to uh, use return-oriented programming. Um, so what you do is you essentially point the link register on the stack to a piece of code that loads other values from the stack uh, into your registers that you're interested in, right? And once you're able to do that, you can actually um, make a call to the system, uh, and then R0 should uh, have the argument to the system call, and then um, it should uh, pop a shell. So the uh, approach that he used was to use a piece of uh, code from ERAN48, which is a libc function. Uh, and I'll show that to you graphically here. So, so the idea is, um, if we have a um, vulnerability, so in this case, I'm just taking a buffer, right? Um, and whatever, I, I'm expecting some sort of string input, I save that into a buffer, right? And then I return. I print it and then I return. So if you if you wanted to uh, overwrite this buffer, um, you would actually uh, have a buffer overflow vulnerability here. So you'll be able to write onto the stack. And then once you're able to write onto the stack, you put uh, the address of ERAN48 as your link register value. And this actually ends up pointing to a uh, piece of code inside ERAN48. Uh, because the specific instructions that you want are to load values from the stack, since you control the stack, uh, to be loaded into R0 and R1. And the instructions that he highlighted were uh, these ones. So it starts off with LDRD R0 R1. So LDRD stands for load um, into register double. So it loads two 32-bit values into R0 and R1, respectively. Once it's done that, then you it subtracts stack pointer minus 12. So it changes the stack pointer. And then it pops uh, the link register into PC. So I actually didn't complete that, but it's just pseudocode. So once that happens, what will happen is if you are able to control buffer here, you're able to write uh, to the uh, stack, you're able to write the link register as ERAN48 plus X. And I'll show you how to do this. Um, and then you're able to pass in the argument for uh, R0, which is the string slash bin slash SH. Uh, 
But we have to put this string somewhere, right? So the way I did it was uh, we can actually do it two ways. You can put it in as part of your input string where it gets put on the stack and then you figure out where that address is and you put that address as your argument. Or you can actually put it in an environment variable um, you know, on, the, on your emulator and you can actually uh, re reference the address of that environment variable and use that for R0 here. Um, so either of two ways uh, will work. So once you have put the argument for R0, what's going to happen is, uh, so assume that it's, uh, it's uh, executing the vulnerable function. It's going to write your string onto the stack. Uh, again, this is increasing memory. Um, so it's actually, the stack will grow downwards and the string gets read uh, in reverse order. So it'll get put down this way. So uh, once you have the link register uh, pointing to this, what will happen is when it pops off, if you remember from our stack down here, once it pops off this link register back in the PC, it's going to jump into ERAN48 plus X, uh, and it's going to load RD, LDRD R0, R1. So it's going to take this value, put it into R0, take this value, put it into R1. Then it's going to subtract stack pointer minus 12, so it's going to actually jump to here. That's uh, three 32-bit values, right? So that's decimal 12. So it's going to skip all this stuff and update the stack pointer to here. And then it's going to pop the link register again back into the PC. So this is the ERAN48 code that's doing this. So you're going to have the address of system here. So at this point, R0 and R1 are going to have the arguments to your system. And finally, uh, once you pop the address of system back into PC, um, it's going to make a call to system with the argument uh, uh, being the slash min slash sh string, right? And uh, and here you can, here in this example, I'm just putting this uh, slash min slash sh string at the end. So uh, once you're able to do this, you will have a shell. So this sort of leads it into the lab four, which is actually in your uh, Lenaro simulator, so to actually start off the Lenaro simulator, share this. And uh, the, the approach I would uh, encourage you to use is GDB. So you can actually step through the vulnerable code. Um, So if you go into CD projects, B overflow, so you'll actually have um, B overflow.c. So, so this is just uh, simulating a vulnerable piece of code. So there's just a car buffer of length five. And it takes whatever input you've uh, given the arguments to the program and uh, calls a string copy into the buffer without checking the bounds. So, um, so this way, you can actually, so if you say dot slash overflow, it's just going to copy it into the stack. So. The way they start doing this is actually, so to craft your input, um, you will need to uh, use Perl. So let me go over that. Um, should be installed. So what you can do is you say Perl-E um, and you can do something like it's 
So each character is uh, one byte, or sorry, uh, yes, each character is one byte. So you're going to have four bytes, uh, 32 bits uh, on the stack, right? So you can have something like A, B, C, D, and if I say times three, let's go ahead. actually I'll put that into a file. So actually, this is the format, sorry. So, so you do Perl dash E, right, uh, followed by a print. And then you give your, you can either give a hex uh, code, or you can give uh, arbitrary jump values. Um, and X3 just multiply, repeats ABCD three times in your uh, input string. Uh, and the way to concatenate these strings is you use period. So when you say Perl dash E print ABCD times three, it's going to print ABCD, 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 followed by hex of ABCD, e, D, E, E, F, um, and then concatenated with EFGH. And so um, you can actually run GDB.dOverflow and then uh, breakpoint at state one. And once you've put your crafted string into solution, you can just say run. And then in backticks, you say cat solution. So it just outputs the Perl string uh, in place and runs the buffer overflow program. So the idea here is um, you need to craft a string that will pop a shell. And uh, in order to get the value, so if, if you want to look at what's in ERAN 48, uh, what I suggest you do is, let me show this to you. So this slide is actually very useful. For that, so. So, so what you can do is you can say GDB e overflow. So now that's in GDP, um, you can actually break point in main for now. And you can actually say P for print, uh, ERAN 48. That's right, I gotta run this, so I'll run it with. So you actually need to run the uh, the binary in order to, for the libc to actually get loaded, I guess. So, so now I've put a breakpoint in main. I've run it with some junk string, right? So once I'm there, I can actually print ERAN48. So this actually gives you the address of uh, where ERAN48 is located in memory. And since it's a shared library, it's always around. Um, you can actually disassemble ERAN48 to look at what instructions are there. So this is what ERAN48 looks like. Uh, and if you remember, the uh, instructions of interest start off at this address, which is 76F28E56. Uh, it has the LDRD R0, R1, uh, and it's loading from the stack into these two registers. It's adding stack pointer plus 12. And then it's popping from the stack into PC. So, so these are the instructions of interest. So we want our link register to point to this address, right? And remember, the uh, everything here is in Little Indian, so you're going to have to provide this address in reverse. And one more very important thing before you start uh, debugging that I have. Should have put on this slide. Yes. So you want to echo zero into uh, randomized VA space. What this is is this is a feature to prevent. Uh, uh, this actually was meant to prevent uh, these style of attacks, but it's address space layout randomization. Um, so the 
Linux actually randomizes where it puts the heap uh, and uh, the stack, depending on the value in this uh, file right here. So there's actually three settings. There's 0, 1, and 2. I believe 2 randomizes heap and the stack, and 1 just randomizes the stack, and 0 doesn't do any randomization. So we want to turn off randomization because it helps us uh, predict where these addresses are going to be in memory, uh, for the stack especially. Uh, and since our string is also going on the stack, uh, in my example anyway, uh, it will make it easier to pinpoint where that string is. So we're turning off address space, address space uh, layout randomization with that command over there. So. And if you want to make sure that zero is being stored in there, you can just uh, tap that value. So it should be zero. So I've been able to get this to work in GDB, but uh, when it's not running GDB, it's uh, kind of difficult to get it to work. So the exploit is turned in because the addresses are different. And the other thing also to remember is, uh, you remember the ATPCS convention I talked about where all addresses, uh, you have to set the least significant bit of every address to one. So whatever address you're getting for ERAN48, you have to set that least significant bit. So just make it odd, essentially add one. So you can also look at your stack. Uh, so if you run in GDB, if you do run with uh, a, a garbage string like ABCD to LMNOP, you can actually see where it ends up in your stack. Uh, if you just do examine slash 5s stack pointer or stack pointer minus 12, uh, you'll see exactly where your string ends up. So if you need to reference this paper, there's a folder on the desktop called uh, red2zp um, has an actual paper for reference. So for this lab, I actually want to credit Zeno for finding out the, uh, the mode switch issue where you have to set the least significant bit uh, to 1. Actually, so I, we can break for lunch now. Uh, also on the system call, so wherever you're doing a branch, basically, you have to do, because if you see the ATPCS manual, so if you go to section 5.1, But the interesting thing I also found out is uh, my make file for the V overflow uses the dash m arm option. Um, so even though I'm saying compile it in arm, uh, it doesn't work. That's why you're all always seeing thumb code for all my examples. Is you know, even if I try the dash m arm option on the emulator, for some reason uh, GCC is not producing arm code. It's still producing thumb. The way you can see this is if you actually do object thumb dash d the overflow ls, you'll actually see some of it. Um, You'll see the intermixing between 16-bit and 32-bit codes. So actually, the main is all 32-bit instead of state one. It's just that uh, 
the shared libraries like libc is going to be mixed. So you're going to have like uh, the libc is going to be mostly in pump, but your main and state one actually are going to be in If I change this to mpum, Now, if I do thumb, you can see that main and state one. So it's actually working. So you can see that it's now producing a mixed 16-bit uh, and 32-bit code. So working for me. But the libc the, is always going to be in uh, thumb. Because that's uh, an artifact from the Lenaro image that I downloaded. So if you compile the VOR flow in thumb, you might not have to add that one to the address. That was a good question. Yeah, so even if I put it in thumb mode, I still have to add that one. <laughs>